Hello, everyone, and welcome to Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. My name is Brent Frayne. I'm the host. The show is also known as PWD Allies Podcast. Check it out on Spotify or your app store or wherever you find it best suited for you. So today I have Mike MP, Mike Morris from Kitchener, Ontario, joining me. And Mike and I and Neil, we're all going to be talking about the Canada Disability Benefit, which did a complete flip flop and well, 200 bucks. Well, uh, wait until July, maybe in July of 2025. And it's only going to go to a select amount of people. Not every PWD, 1.5 million uh, disabled Canadians are not going to get it. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to pass the mic over to you, Mike. Thanks for joining me. Well, just before, just before Mike starts, I just wanted to oh. say like, we weren't even planning to do this podcast. This mm-hmm. is what, what we would call a very special edition podcast because we weren't mm-hmm. planning to do it. Monday was going to be our last podcast for a while before you went on your train trip. And then the announcement with the CDB hit and it was like, we have to do something. And, yes. and like like we were saying off camera is like, uh, you know, it could have been just you and I, Brent, uh, mm-hmm. complaining about <laughs> what happened, you know, on the 17th or 16th, I guess it was. <laughs> I guess it was. Um, but I, I, I thought to do it justice, we have to reach out to to Mike Morris here. And uh, so I'm really glad that you're available last minute, Mike, to do this. Well, it, well right, uh, right away, though, I, I wanted to quickly mention something. When that budget came out, Mike, um, the first thought in my mind, is this, a, is this a, a delayed April Fool's joke? That's the first thing I thought in my mind. Is this a delayed April Fool's joke? I thought, no, I'm, I'm not hearing this right. Oh, uh, yeah, that was my, yeah. my thought. Yeah. Yeah. Truthfully, when I re- read it for the first time, Brent, I misread it and thought it was per month. 2400 is yeah, what it says too. in the budget yeah. per year. Yeah. That's and what I it thought. took me a moment to realize that it was, in fact, 200 a month. And uh, it's just so, so deeply disappointing. Uh, it's an honor that you both asked me to be a part of the show today um, at a time when we are looking to uh, kind of continue to put the pressure on. This is what's been proposed. It's not set in stone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's so important that we, we we make sure that the voices of the disability community, that folks with disabilities uh, are being heard right now. And that's been my interest. And so happy to be back with you again to, uh, mm-hmm. to answer any questions you might have, but also continue to, to put pressure on the government to act yeah i have i actually have one uh, quick question for you mike um now the looks like the uh the federal government's going to put that dtc uh in there as a uh, as a stumbling block to as a as a pre-qualifier in order to get that uh that big two hundred dollars <laughs> yeah is um is is that is that what I'm hearing? Um, is so that, that that's exactly what is proposed in the budget. Um, mm. What I have shared in past. So we first started to hear rumors about this back in December, and that's when I first brought this up in question period. The possibility we'd started to hear uh, that officials might be looking to use the disability tax credit. I then followed up on it back in February to call out that we were actually successful, my team and I, in securing an amendment that came from the disability community that calls for the Canada Disability Benefit to be barrier-free in the application process. Mm -hmm. And so I shared it then. I was back on the floor again last night. Um, My read is that's in contravention of the Act. I I do not understand how this government is going to make the case that the disability tax credit isn't barrier free. Uh, To their credit, they have allocated some money in the budget that I'm sure you've noted in in terms of uh, the, to help folks to apply for the disability tax credit. I was able to follow up with officials to understand that they're actually expecting the number of people who access the DTC to increase as a result of this. Um, However, I, I, I don't see any argument where one could say 
that the DTC is without barriers. In fact, the case I've been making on the floor of the house is it's actually the exact opposite. It is one of the most burdensome federal programs that are currently available. And so to, to limit those who can access the Canada Disability Benefit to those who have access to the Disability Tax Credit uh, is not only disappointing, uh, but in, in my read, it, it doesn't meet the stipulations of an amendment we secured to Bill C-22, which is now the Canada Dis Disability Benefit Act. And so it's not only that it's limited to $200 per person per month and that it's limited to those who have the DTC. Of course, mm -hmm. also, it's not meant uh, according to what's proposed in the budget, at least to even begin until next July of 2025. Yeah. Uh, I don't, for all the talk about consultation, mm. I, I, I haven't heard from a single person with a disability who said that any of those three things are what they wanted. And so yeah. that's what I tried to raise last night is if you're saying, uh, in fact, one of the quotes I read out from Twitter from last night, uh, um, Elandria is, is the person who said, they sure put nothing in nothing without us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. This is what uh, one of our panelists on uh, our previous show the other day, um, Minnie St. Clair mm -hmm. said, is that uh, the whole not nothing about us without us is without us. <laughs> and that that's what her comment was. And it's so true, right? I mean, it's just it's just uh, like it's just virtual signal signaling or, right. you know, and it's it's just very insulting, the whole thing. Um, you know, I, I have this. Uh, I think of about this metaphor, you know, how sometimes you have, like when you're putting a wedding together, you have, uh, there's always that troublesome uncle or aunt that you, you're like, where, 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 where do I put this, this uncle and aunt that, 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 that are just uh, kind of annoying or troublesome. And you have, you put them on a, uh, on a separate table, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of feels what the disability com community is that we're this, this nuisance, uh, nuisance group that has to be put off to a separate table uh and we don't we don't have a proper seat at the table we're we're by the kitchen by the by the noisy kitchen somewhere you know out of out of sight you know and mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. it's just very very insulting w one of the things that i wanted to do is i wanted to kind of go down memory lane a little bit like back up the train and and do um you know we have to realize that the the Canada Dis Disability Benefit was first announced back wow. in 2021, mm -hmm. right? And well, before then, even right, Neil. Well, to be that's fair, funny. it was kind of reannounced in the platform yeah, in 2021. That's, that's but true. to Brent's point, you all, it was 2020 in the speech from the throne, right? And and, yeah. and really had been called for from the disability community even prior to that. They finally got the the notice in 2020, uh, and mm -hmm. I think I only raised that as a reminder to make clear that this is, you know, everything that has been accomplished has been because of the advocacy of the disability community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is proposed in the budget is not the final. It's, it's mm -hmm. what we're going right. we're gonna to need to continue to advocate. In fact, I was just on my feet this morning, and sorry I interrupted, uh, Neil, so I'll throw it back to you, but <laughs> even just this morning uh, to a question from the NDP when they were speaking about the budget, where I tried to put to them on the floor of the House, you know, uh, there is not a coalition government, but there is a supply and confidence agreement. Mm -hmm. And that means that, that they do need another party to pass this budget. And so there is an opportunity to push for more uh, uh, f amongst those who are going to support the budget. Uh, yeah. And so there is, there is pressure that can be placed on all parliamentarians to push for more uh, in, in what's been proposed, whether it's in this budget or in the next economic statement, uh, this can't be seen as kind of the, uh, the final proposal from the government because it's just so far from where they set the expectation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, oh, absolutely. You know, the disability community right now, I mean, as you see on Twitter or X or whatever people want to call it now, um, it's just blowing up. As soon as that budget came out, I mean, people feel betrayed. They feel that they're, they don't have the, you know, the, the right to live with dignity and respect. Uh, and it's just like so many people are just reaching out saying like, well, what's the point in living now? And you, we, have to, we have to ensure them that, that we're going to keep advocating and keep pushing forward. I mean, all of us to keep pushing up that, that hill and, 
and push the uh, the the policy makers to do the right thing and amend amend this and do the right thing and get people above the poverty line. I mean, nobody and, in Canada. Is living and, in poverty. and to that end, Brent, actually, um, it was about three weeks ago or so, uh, Mike, where where you stood up and uh, you took a lot of slings and arrows and bullets um, when you said that uh, you know that. Uh, that uh, people with disabilities don't have the right to live, but but you've but this government has given them the right to die, you know. And everybody was mm. like, "Boo hiss!" You know, you had all the oh, scoffers. You had all the scoffers going after you. But I mean, this uh, this today, uh, you know, uh, proves uh, this is like is the explanation mark. This proves how little. Uh, People with disabilities are respected, right? Yeah, I was really just trying to make the point that it's clear that government can move quickly when it chooses to, whether it's because mm -hmm. the courts require it or in the pandemic when it comes to CERB and the disability community, yeah. of course. You both have been such strong advocates when it comes to DERB and the Disability Emergency Response Benefit. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it, it is a powerful call from the disability community uh, to note how governments can move quickly. Mm -hmm. and to call out that they should be moving quickly uh, and adequately when it comes to funding the Canada Disability Benefit. It's the point I've been uh, making you know, in question periods since I was elected. Yeah. Obviously, as you mentioned, Neil, a few weeks ago when I made the same point, it was met with, uh, I wasn't expecting that response from mm -hmm. Liberal colleagues at the time. Um, but I think this budget kind of proves out that uh, that we're not seeing the urgency mm -hmm. or the adequacy that meets even the expectation that their party set in a platform mm -hmm. under the terms of if they get reelected, which they did. And so I think it's totally reasonable and appropriate for uh, parliamentarians to call them on that to amp amplify uh, what we're hearing from the disability community. Well, yeah. especially with the provinces, actually, they didn't give a rate increases to people with disabilities in their province and territories because they were waiting on the federal government to come out with it. Now it's kind of like almost like egg in the face, shall we say, going, oh, oh, and then they hear like $200, uh, but they have to wait till then. So now it's going to go in. I, I'm sure a lot of them are going, uh-oh, like, oh boy, what do we do now? Well, well yeah. that's this brings up another point, Brent, and I didn't know if because I think uh, probably probably Mike doesn't know this, and a lot of our listeners don't know this, is that mm. is that six weeks ago <laughs> you kept this under wraps, but six weeks yeah. ago you had special information. <laughs> uh, you were given mm. uh, special privileges pri privileged information uh, mm -hmm. from an insider inside mm -hmm. the provincial government here in BC. Mm -hmm. uh, that the Canada disability was was happening, and this person gave the impression that it was going to be happening this July. Yeah, it, it, gave, it gave the distinct um, impression that it was going to be happening this July, and mm -hmm. and that um, also the impression was that it was going to be poverty poverty level support. So so like here in BC, uh, right now our Right now, our um, our assistance rates are fifteen hundred bucks a month for um, single, right? So I thought to bring it up to the LICO amount is about twenty one hundred dollars a month, right? So I thought, yeah. if that being the case, if that being the case, then that that means that the that means that the CDB would have had to be targeted at six hundred dollars minimum mm -hmm. to hit mm -hmm. to hit the LICO amount, right? And so mm -hmm. this was six. This was six weeks ago, and we and you and I and and Sonia too. We've all been sitting on that information. We didn't we didn't we didn't tell anybody because we were, we were wondering like uh, like there was even like um, opposition opposition members didn't have a clue. Like you yeah. got you got information uh, internet inside information that nobody like even the opposition uh, people didn't even know. Yeah, I I was I was told uh, pertinent information that. I could advocate it out, but I couldn't say where I heard it from. Where, where who the source yeah, was? Yeah, where the source was, and it, it was just eating away at me because I was told that don't worry, there is going to be something in this budget, okay, and it's definitely going to help people with disabilities. And I said, but well, people are suffering right now, sir. 
right now, people are suffering and to the person. And uh, they're like, yeah, uh, you know, we get it. And that's why the federal government's going to be delivering on this. Uh, rest assured, um, it's good news. Um, the same individual then told me, um, I fast forward past six weeks, I mean, to current, was uh, that had got off the phone with the minister in charge of disability for feds and wouldn't give out that information and saying, well, how much is going to be in the budget? I, I don't know. Yeah. So now we now know that that she that minister actually did know did know how much was going to be in the budget as we know when the budget came out on April sixteenth, twenty twenty four. Um, but obviously, there's a hell of a lot more that we need to uh, to do advocating to push them in the right direction. And um, yeah, like you mentioned, Mike, um, you know the opposition uh, that's holding uh, with the coalition that's holding the liberals to account. We need them now to now hold the liberals to account and get a like a equivalent of a derb out there i mean either we use the word derb or immediate support uh you know to help people between now and by the time that they work on uh, all the uh, red tape rigmarole but but my thing is like i just wonder if the, like some sort of bait and switch thing happened you know what i mean mm -hmm. like like i don't know well, like i'm just i'm just hypothesizing because mm -hmm. uh you know like we had Sheila Malcolmson on your podcast too. And, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Jeff Leggett and yourself uh, have met privately with Sheila, Sheila Malcolmson quite a few mm -hmm. times. And she's put out there, like, it's not, it's not private information. She's put out there publicly many times that the, the LICO amount uh, is $2,100. The, the MBM, the market basket measure is $2,200. And that, mm -hmm. In her private discussions with the federal government about the CDB, mm -hmm. she said, she said, she told you and you and Jeff both that mm -hmm. the federal government was targeting, was targeting the LICO amount. That's what, that's what she said. So if the gov if the federal government was targeting the LICO amount of 2,200 bucks, kind of what happened, you know, what happened if, 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 if indeed the LICO amount was targeted of $2,100, what what happened so i mm. i kind of wonder i kind of wonder and this has kind of been my secret fear from the beginning to, to to be honest with with you mike is like i i was always at the very beginning like back in 2020 or 2021 like i like the idea i like the idea of the cdb like i saw the potential of it mm -hmm. but like i wasn't like the raw raw like everybody accused me and brent of being the raw 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 type you know like let's yeah, go let's we, go like you know we, and i was I was pessimistic, right? I was. Yeah, we, we had that feeling that I had that feeling that they're, they were going to screw it up somehow. And guess what? Yeah. yeah. And and so, again, this goes back to my point. Like if if Sheila Malcolmson was saying that in her consultations with the federal government, they were targeting the LICO amount, hmm. you kind of wonder, did did some other provinces um, hmm. in the backroom deals get their back up and say, you know, don't make us look bad, you know? And 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 then may, maybe the prime minister said, "Well, watch me," kind of thing. Yeah, I, I don't, don't, I don't know, but it's it that much money we want to give out. It, least it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder. Yeah. yeah, I would just offer. You know, we also heard you might know I've been pushing for a windfall profit tax on the oil and gas industry, and it's coming out now that there was lobbying from the industry in the yeah. weeks leading up to the budget. That would have been an extra $4.2 billion that could have gone towards, for example, an increase to the Canada disability benefit. Yeah. We will hear all kinds of stories about whatever happened behind the scenes mm -hmm. leading mm -hmm. up to this budget. My um, offering would be to consider that ultimately it's people power that got us this far and it's going to be people power that's going to uh, move us further in a better direction. And to the extent that folks have the energy and interest, I would encourage putting that towards applying political pressure yeah. mm -hmm. on your MP uh, collectively through organizations uh, that are bringing folks together as well as through the grassroots. Because it's clear to me that they haven't felt sufficient pressure. We would have mm -hmm. seen a better number uh, on Tuesday of this week. But the fact that it's there at all is also only because of yeah. all of the pressure yeah. that's been building up uh, to this point. And, and even, you know, some of the 
organizations that have moved in solidarity. I'm thinking about the Daily Bread Food Bank, for example. You look at the three recommendations, the top three, and I have colleagues in the House of Commons who will say to me, you look at the lineups in the food banks, we've got to axe the tax. Well, what I've said to them is, well, let's read what the food banks are actually telling the federal government they want. And in fact, exactly. all three of the top recommendations from the Daily Bread Food Bank are all related to the Canada Disability Benefit. And mm -hmm. so all that is because of the disability community and folks with disabilities who've been raising this alarm for years and years. And mm -hmm. ob it's obvious that more of that pressure is going to be required to move the current government and MPs mm -hmm. on all sides, because it is a minority parliament, to mm -hmm. push for better. I can tell you right now, you didn't ask, but I'll, I'll be clear with you, I can't support the budget as it stands mm -hmm. right now. I, I can't vote for this, for this budget. I would yeah. need to see uh, more, for example, when it comes to the Canada Disability Benefit, as, as well as other measures like a windfall profit tax. And so we're gonna need more pressure not mm -hmm. necessarily to say, okay, vote against the budget, but rather to say, we expect more in order to earn that support uh, mm -hmm. from the governing party. They could bring forward an amendment, for example, to do it. Um, and, and so uh, we can spend our time uh, wondering what happened the last few weeks, mm -hmm. or we could focus it on the advocacy that's going to be required, the mobilizing that you both are doing through yeah. podcasts like this one, what I see online, what we know is happening in person, the meetings and the phone calls. And I know it can be exhausting, mm -hmm. but we also know that it's that mobilization and that organizing uh, that turns that our, our, our anger into constructive advocacy that is the reason exactly. why we have gotten this far why well, you've gotten this far it, it, it's, it's always i always say it's like kicking down another door and another door opens and you just keep on going like a domino effect yeah, yeah it just it just makes me scratch my head because let's throw out the buzzwords at the beginning when when the cdb was first announced it was uh you know the carlo quattro, quattro was would say words like it's going to be transformative it's going to be groundbreaking it's going to lift disabled people out of out of uh poverty it's going to be historic you know, mm. and all these things. And then she, she said, like, I'm hell, I'm hell bent. She would say things like, I'm hell bent on getting this thing out there. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, but, but uh, $200 a month is not, is not it's, groundbreaking. It's not transformative, you know? That, that's uh, like $6 a day. Um, and, you know, average, uh, average prices now, as we know, inflation um, and the interest rates, everything combined, um, you know, by the time it gets down to the consumer, um, you know, that cost is now skyrocketed right up. Um, as we all know, I, you know, uh, tax the, tax the, uh, the multi-billion dollar corporations, like, like you mentioned, like, I mean, to me, if, if that, if I had to vote on that, if, if I was, you know, in, in, uh, in parliament or river and I had to vote on that, oh yeah, I'd be right away. I'd say, yeah, tax the, you know, I mean, they, they, you know, get this done. Like they got to tax the ultra rich in order to pay for this services. I mean, if they want to do business in Canada, they got to pay their tax fair share of taxes. End of story on that one. I know. I, I know. I mean, I get your view on that, but uh, well, we've I, reached the top of the hour, also, uh, Brent. So I yeah. want to be respectful of Mike's time as well. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I can just close by saying thanks to you both, mm -hmm. um, yep. and to folks who are listening for all that um, you've done to 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 bring us to this point. Um, yeah, I really appreciate being back with you to continue the conversation, and obviously, we're going to have to continue the advocacy. And Absolutely. we do that best when we're um, mo uh, mobilizing folks right across the country. And I know you both have been doing that. Mm -hmm. And so have groups like Inclusion Canada and March of Dimes and Disability Without Poverty and others. And so uh, I really, uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, uh, you for, for bringing me back on again for this conversation, for all your advocacy, uh, mm -hmm. because ultimately it, it really is about trying to hear the voices of folks with disabilities and amplify those as, as best we can. And I feel like I've, uh, you know, benefited so much as an MP uh, from conversations with you both. And so mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. You know, and thank you, Mike. I, you know, it's a great pleasure having you uh, come back on um, and, you know, touching base with us um, and continuing your, av your advocacy too, uh, and pushing, pushing the, the federal government on doing the right thing. Uh, and, you know, and any MP that uh, is involved in that decision making, um, because it affects, you know, people's lives. I mean, 
people from what I hear, even in my community, Mike, um, you know, they just they just want to live with with respect and dignity and have enough money where they can, you know, thrive within their community and give back to their community. And when they feel that that the, a government had made a promise and then they fall through on it, I had a lady this morning I was talking to. She was crying because she says she feels that the federal government gave up on her, and that she's not worth as a yeah. citizen. And I said, no, I will keep fighting for you. I will. I will get um, other uh, advocates and other organizations to keep fighting MPs to keep fighting. We're all in this together to keep fighting going forward. And so I want to, you know, I want to thank you, uh, Mike. And I just want to pass that information on to you. And if you can maybe pass that on to into the House of Commons, that's the story that that I shared with you today. Um, that I guess the moral of it is people feel that they, they were let down that they were let down yeah. by the federal government, that the government doesn't care. But I'm so glad, Brent, you're able to share with her that while she may have been let down by this government, there are folks who are listening. And it starts with yourself mm -hmm. and, and then builds towards uh, parliamentarians like myself that mm -hmm. we need to ground our advocacy in that experience. And, 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 and folks need to know that there are listening ears, even when we're not seeing uh, a political party or uh, you know uh, government moving as quickly as we'd like. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, that we're there to support one another in those difficult moments uh, and, and 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 to share those stories. And so I appreciate you sharing it with uh, with me. Yeah, thank you, Mike. And I get the uh, <clears throat> I got a train trip starting tomorrow. From all the way from enjoy Vancouver, it. Yeah, Vancouver to enjoy Toronto. It, Brent. So yeah, it's going to be great. But until until our next uh, conversation, um, thank you very much, and uh, I hope to uh, have you back on very soon when I uh, when I return. Looking forward to it. Thanks, that Mike. sounds great. Take okay. care, of you both. Yeah. Okay. Thank All you, right. everyone, for tuning in today. Uh, it was uh, MP Mike Morris from Kitchener, Ontario, uh, talking about the Canada Disability Benefit. Uh, always great to have Mike join, and uh, we'll see you again soon, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone.